is uh, kind of humbling to be standing here right now, to be honest. Uh, it was just a few years ago. I was sitting uh, right in y'all's seats. Um, and I was thinking this morning, so I'm not some a random guy up here. I want to just share a little bit of my story, kind of where I came from uh, and how I ended up here uh, this morning. And so I graduated Lipscomb in 2010. Uh, I was a business marketing major throughout the entire time. I graduated, um, started working at an insurance company here in Nashville at State Farm. And so I worked there for two years. Uh, I was working at State Farm and I randomly get a phone call one day from one of my former friends, who's a former campus minister here at Lipscomb, and he said, hey, um, this is totally out of the blue, but I want to ask you if you would to quit your job and to come on uh, full time at, at Ethos. And he's like, hey, I don't really have a salary for you yet. I'm not going to pay you, uh, but I think it's going to be awesome, so I think you should do it. Uh, so after after praying about it a little bit and discerning, um, I, I was like, all right, let's do this. Let's jump on in. And so it's kind of wild uh, to stand here, like, listening to y'all sing. Uh, I'm really absolutely humbled uh, that I get to be here uh, this morning with you all. I know this is the last chapel, uh, the last chapel for you seniors, like, ever, uh, which for some of you, you're like, hallelujah, praise Jesus, this is awesome. Uh, some of you are, like, really sad, you're thinking about all the last things. Uh, that you're going to be doing over the next, I guess, week and a half before you walk across the stage. And so I kind of had it all in mind when I started thinking about um, speaking this morning. Uh, but I also thought uh, not only does, is this going to apply to the seniors, uh, but a lot of you are getting ready to head into the summer. A lot of you are getting ready to head into internships, uh, kind of a new, a new season of life. So I was uh, kind of asked to reflect upon uh, things that I had learned, uh, things that I had learned in school uh, since graduating, and then I just kind of share um, those those things with you all so that uh, you don't have to make the mistakes that I did. And you can kind of maybe start living out some of the things I've learned and still uh, still learning to live out. And so this morning, I, I'm going to give you, it's going to be a very practical, practical chapel, I hope. I'm going to give you five things. Uh, five things that I've just kind of learned from people uh, just through uh, living and making mistakes. And so if you're a note taker, um, I'm just going to encourage you to write these five things down. They're simple. They're easy. If you're not a note taker, I'm going to encourage you to write them down anyway. Not because I think I have something awesome to say. Not because I think um, it's like tweet worthy or worth quoting ever. But because uh, the things I'm going to share with you, these five things, are things that I wrote down. I literally wrote these down. And so it was easy for me when I started thinking about this morning to go back and to look at those things uh, that I had written down, that I had learned. And so I want to encourage you to write these down. And not because I'm awesome, but because maybe one day you'll look back and, and you'll look at these things. So uh, for the record, I just want you to know, like, I'm a work in progress. Um, I don't have any of these things figured out. Um, I, I really am not very good at any of them yet, uh, but I'm learning. And so uh, just know that I'm not talking at you. I'm, like, talking to myself uh, this entire time uh, this morning. Uh, so... I'm just gonna I'm gonna run through. Um, I'm gonna start with number one. So number one thing I wish I had learned, I wish I had put into practice sooner, uh, was work from your rest instead of resting from your work. So work from your rest instead of resting from your work. And here's here's what I mean by that. For the longest time, uh, the pattern that I seemed to live out was that I would work really really hard. I would have a project. I would like bust my butt. And then, I'm sure this story is very similar for all of you, at the end of that, I would just crash. And I would wake up the next morning, and I would bust my butt, and I would work, and I would work, and I would work, and I would crash. And I realized, instead of um, always working, and working to find a place of rest, um, two things happened when I did the reversal. When I worked out of a place of rest, two, two things happened. One, uh, the rest portion of my life became so much better. Uh, I enjoyed it so much more. It became more beneficial. It became more authentic. Uh, so the moments when I said, you know what, I'm going to work out of a place of rest rather than resting from my work. That's one of the things that happened. The second thing that happened was my work, whatever it was, whether it was schoolwork, whether it was uh, my job, my work became so much more uh, enjoyable because I had come out of this place of rest so I wasn't like absolutely exhausted uh, 
during that time of work, I, I realized it's just not a lot of fun um, living that pattern. And so the times when you can uh, work out of a place of rest, I think you're going to learn uh, it's, it's just a lot more fun to do life that way. Um, I found this out as I was kind of studying for this morning. So look back to the Hebrew people. This is kind of crazy when I found this out. The Hebrew people, so the Jewish people, um, what, what they would do is their, their days would start um, at dusk. So their days would start, uh, think about that, at dusk, what do you do? You know, you're spending time with friends, you're having dinner with your friends, uh, you're spending time with family, you're um, doing that kind of thing. And then the very next thing you do is you go to sleep, you rest. Um, and you look all the way back to creation. Uh, I, was, I was thinking about this this morning. You look all the way back to creation, what came first? Night. Night came first, and then day. It was like God was like trying to tell us something. And so often, I know if you're like me, you get this reversed, man. You just kill yourself, and then you just crash. And so the moments when you can learn to um, work out of a place of rest, man, life is life is just going to be better. And that's one of the one of the things I've learned. So second thing, number two. So first thing, if you write these down, work from your rest instead of resting from your work. Number two. A depth of friendship is greater than width of friendship. Uh, so depth of friendship is greater than width of friendship. Uh, man, if I'm just being honest, when I was in school here, I cared so much about what people thought of me. I cared so much about uh, how many friends I could have. Like Literally, I would be like worried about how many friends on Facebook I had or how many followers. Actually, Twitter wasn't popular when I was in school. So, But for, for you all, how many Twitter followers you had. And I just became obsessed with this game of uh, figuring out how my friend group could get wider uh, rather than uh, caring about the friends that I had. And so um, I'm going to be the first person to tell you to be as involved as possible. That, that's, that's just who I am. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to care uh, as much about uh, what people think or how many friends you have. Uh, one of the things I realized is that uh, life just happens, and there are these moments that suck. Um, am I allowed to say that? Suck? Yeah, y'all are all adults. There's these moments uh, that happen, and it's crappy. And you realize what is really important are the, the friends you have that know who you are, that know your struggles, um, that know what you've been through up to this point. And so when life happens, uh, when the stuff hits the fan, you're going to want to care um, about the depth of your friendships far more than you're going to care about the width of your friendships. Uh, so that's number two. Uh, depth of friendship is greater than width of friendship. Are y'all y'all with me? Y'all here? Cool. Awesome. Uh, number three, be more concerned with who you're becoming than what you are doing. Be more concerned with who you are becoming than what you are doing. Um, you're going to get busy. Uh, there are going to be uh, moment after moment in life when you're going to have more to do than you can get done. I know you're all thinking, yeah, like right now. That's, that's my life right now. Uh, so I, I realized uh, the first corner that I cut when I got busy, the very first corner that I cut was how I was doing, meaning my heart, like how um, how I was doing with Jesus, how I was doing with the Lord. So the very first corner you're going to cut, and you can probably relate to this, um, I, I still struggle with this. I get busy, life happens, there's more to do than I can get done, and I put on the very back burner my relationship with Jesus. Um, time and time and time again, I, I realize, especially after graduating, and you get into, I quote, the real world, right, and uh, results are like the only thing the world tells you that matters. Like results. Hey, we want to see results. Um, get results quickly. Um, and the things uh, that matter the most in um, things like your heart and your relationship with Jesus, they tend to be a lot slower than a lot of other things. Uh, the results from that, the fruit from that uh, tend to be just a lot slower. This is, this is just things that, that I have realized. So I just encourage you as life gets busy, as life gets rushed, as you enter into this time of exams, uh, man, do not cut uh, the corner that matters the most. Be more concerned with who you are becoming uh, than what you are doing. Uh, I love this verse, Matthew six thirty three. 
This is kind of the verse that was uh, pinging on my heart when I was thinking about this. It says, Seek first my kingdom and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. And I realized the times when I really live into this, when I really believe this, are the times when uh, it becomes it becomes really true. Uh, so, so when times get busy, uh, be more concerned with who you are becoming uh, than what you are doing. Uh, number four, there is no formula for love and relationships. Um, no formula for love and relationships. Man, if I think back on my time at Lipscomb, I spent more time consumed with this than I did probably everything else about intramurals, like studying, going to class. I spent more time consumed thinking about uh, relationships and love than I than I did anything. And I know this is probably a lot of y'all's kind of story as well. Seriously, I caused myself so much anguish and pain and hurt and exhaustion uh, worrying about this stuff. Um, so I had always had this dream of what life was going to be like. You know, I go to Lipscomb, I meet my wife right off at Quest Week. Um, everything is going to work out exactly like I think it's going to. And something that was so hard for me to uh, really uh, realize and was that uh, there is absolutely no formula. The relationship that you have in your mind is probably not going to be the relationship that plays out. If it is good for you, for the rest of us, man, we hate your guts. Um, and so really, I mean that. Um, you know, you, you, I had these couples in my mind, um, and I'm sure you know, different folks, you have different people in mind you can think of right now. You think they had the perfect story. Uh, they had the perfect love story. That's what I think like, mine's gonna look like. I just want you to know uh, it's probably not, and that's okay. Like, it really is okay. Uh, you may graduate, and you may be engaged. That's awesome. You may graduate, uh, you may not be engaged. That's awesome. Like, really and truly, I mean that. Uh, whatever your story is right now, realize it's okay that it's your story, and God has a plan for you, and you don't need to be consumed with uh, putting your plan in this dream plan uh, that you have always had uh, your entire life. I promise, uh, and he promises, like, the plans he has for you are far better than any plan you could ever come up with in your mind. It's easy to say. I know I'm like saying it right now, but it's easy to say, and that's hard, hard to live out. But, um, man, I caused myself so much pain uh, worrying about that. And I want you all to know, uh, you don't have to. He has a plan for you. Number five. Um, number five is learn to enjoy the Lord. Learn to enjoy the Lord. And I know all you people on your laptops, you're probably taking notes and not studying for a test. I just, I figured that's probably true right now. Um, learn to enjoy the Lord, number five. Um, this area, in all honesty, is the one I struggle with the most. Um, this area is probably the area that I'm growing in the most and come into this place this morning with the most vulnerability. Um, I learned... Hey, it's not a set of rules. Like living out my faith is not a set of rules. Um, and so I learned this, and then I realized, hey, this whole Christianity thing, this following Jesus, is simply like echoing the life uh, that he that he lived. I'm like, okay, I've got that figured out. And I realized I was quickly becoming legalistic about not being legalistic, and this pattern started happening where. I was doing things. I was living for God, but I realized it was not out of joy. It was not out of um, this place of overflow, but it was out of a place of just exhaustion and need. And so, number five, I'm working on it. Um, and I really want you to work on it as well because the more we learn to enjoy the Lord, um, the more we learn to enjoy um, His presence. Um, not the easier life gets, but the better life gets. And I was thinking, that's easy to say, like, enjoy the Lord. Like, what does that even mean? Um, I don't even fully know uh, what it means. And so I was thinking, how do you get there? How do you get there? And I started thinking, maybe if we look back uh, to the one uh, who created us, maybe we look at how he feels about us, uh, we can get to this place where we enjoy him. So 
this passage, uh, Ephesians 2, uh, came to mind. It, I just was reflecting upon uh, God's attitude towards us. And that's Ephesians 2.10. It says, For we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. For we are God's handiwork. Like, he is the craftsman. He is the, the worker. He knew exactly what you were going to be like. Um, he knew exactly the things that you were going to love. Uh, he knew how you would look. He knew how your personality would be. Um, and he created you. Like, think of yourselves. I know this is so hard. Uh, it's like we are our biggest critics. We are so critical of ourselves. Uh, but think of yourself as like God's masterpiece. Um, the way that he created you is the way that you're supposed to be. And the more that we live into that, uh, the more uh, we just are able to, to enjoy him. So that's Ephesians 2. We're God's handiwork. Um, Zephaniah 317 uh, says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. Let me repeat that again. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. I was thinking about enjoying the Lord, and I think of what David says, delight in the Lord. And it's, it's really hard to delight in the things that maybe don't delight in you. Um, and so this passage came to mind, and I was thinking, how easy is it to delight in someone or something that also delights in you? And this passage where it says, the Lord your God is in your midst. He wants to be with you. He is a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice. He will sing over you, you specifically, with gladness. And it made me realize that's how David got to this point where he said in Psalm 34, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Because he realized how much his father loved him. He realized, like, God is um, my creator. He, he made me. He, he knew exactly who I was going to be, how I was going to be. Uh, and he calls me his masterpiece. Uh, so the, the more that we can just dwell in how God really really views us, I think the easier it becomes to, to live out. Number five, uh, learn to enjoy the Lord. So I'm going to kind of go back through those. Number one, work from your rest instead of resting from your work. That's number one. Work from your rest instead of resting from your work. Number two, uh, your depth of friendships are greater than your width of friendships. Uh, number three, be more concerned with who you are becoming uh, than what you are doing. More concerned with who you are becoming uh, than what you are doing. Number four, there is no formula for love and relationships. There's no formula uh, for love and relationships. And number five, uh, learn, learn to enjoy the Lord. Uh, like I said, I am not great at any of these. I'm still a major work in progress. Um, but my, my like prayer for today is that one of these, maybe one of these, will kind of stick in your brain, maybe resonate in your heart. Um, and when you leave this place, don't leave like, all right, got to do this out of my own strength. I've got to come to a place of rest before I work. No, like God's going to God's gonna do that in you uh, through his power. And I just wanted to pray over you guys as you enter into a time of finals, uh, graduating, heading into internships in the summer. And so uh, I just wanted to pray for you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'm so humbled that I got to be here. So, Father.